Hey guys, today I want to show you something that I think you'll find useful, um, especially if you have a vapor blasting cabinet. And what I'm talking about is this device here. And you might recognize what this is uh, right off, but this is what's called a cyclone. It typically, cyclones are used in um, dust collection, uh, in factories, in sandblasting cabinets. Uh, any place where you have dusty conditions or sawdust or anything you need to have removed from, from an airstream. But this particular design here is used for uh, getting rid of contaminants not in an airstream but in a stream of water. So these are what you'd be using with a vapor blasting cabinet. And these will make your life a lot easier when it comes to clean out day. No one likes clean out day with a vapor blaster. It's kind of a pain in the backside. So what this does is this mounts to your cabinet uh, to the side wall and this part here protrudes into the in interior of the cabinet and when it's time to clean out your old media what you do is you disconnect a hose from the back of your vapor blasting gun and you connect it to the cyclone then you turn on your slurry pump uh, the water goes in here and it spins around the top and that forces the particles to the outer wall and they slide down in, you know, to the bottom here and goes into the collection container. Uh, so, oh, and then the clean water comes out of the top here and gets recycled back into your, into your um, slurry pit. What makes this nice is whenever you're cleaning out your cabinet, uh, this thing is doing its job of cleaning out the water, getting rid of the beads or abrasive or whatever you're using while you're concentrating on actually cleaning out the cabinet, cleaning out your slurry pit, whatever it is. Uh, this pretty much works by itself. Now before I was just using a couple buckets and a line coming from my slurry pump and I fill up those buckets and I let the media go to the bottom then I'd have to keep pouring the water off. So this makes it nice because you don't have to keep putting more water in while you're cleaning. Uh, this does a thorough job by itself. So I want to do a demonstration for you guys next. Um, unfortunately, I can't install this on my cabinet the way my setup is now. The cabinet's really small and I have a lot of plumbing coming out of the sides of my cabinet. It's kind of a, it was my second prototype. So I'm not really set up to put this on my existing cabinet. So what I'm going to do is just put this into a five gallon bucket. Uh, I, I made a couple of Delrin ears here to hang this in the bucket and demonstrate it that way. And it's it's exact same principle, just because I don't have it permanently mounted um, doesn't affect anything for this demonstration. Um, I do have another cabinet that I'm fabricating that's much larger. Uh, hopefully that'll be done here in the spring sometime and then I can do a permanent mount to my cabinet with the Cyclone. And I'm looking forward to that. So let's go ahead and get everything hooked up here and do a uh, demonstration so you can see how this works. And if you're interested in getting one of these for yourself, I will put a link in the description to the guy who designed that. He, he has a, a vapor blasting shop too, plus he does design work in 3D printing, obviously this is 3D printed. And it's one of those things that uh, after I got it and tried it, I thought, why didn't I have something like this about five years ago? Um, because no one likes cleaning up their cabinets. So this is my temporary setup here. Uh, like I said, I'm not mounting it to the cabinet. I will at some point, but my other cabinet isn't finished yet. And uh, that's a whole story in itself. And I made some video on that. We're in the process of making video for it. But for right now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hang this in this bucket like that and run the hoses to it and because um, even though it's not permanent it does give it a stable location where I can use it whenever I am changing out media. So let's go ahead and I just made some hangers here for it. I was, used to make magnet fixtures and those real high power magnets so that's what the Delrin is for. And I haven't used it forever so I just decided to Instead of it laying on the floor, I might as well use it for this. OK, 
Okay, now how this works, this is fairly obvious. It just hangs on the bucket like that, real simple. So that's enough to allow it, um, you know, just to be suspended the top of the bucket and if it starts to fill up too much of course I'll just change the bucket out and that's not rocket science. Now here's a dedicated line I have coming from my slurry pump. Now I've had a line on that, a half inch line forever now and that's what I use to remove the slurry before if I wanted to change it out. What I do is I just put this in the bucket here and fill up the bucket with water and then the glass beads go right to the bottom and I dump off the excess and I keep filling it and as the bucket got full I would go to a different bucket just because it got really heavy. Um, but now that I have a cyclone, I can still use the bucket, of course. I'm just going to plug this into here. Very simple. I might have to put something on that to keep it from falling over, at least for now. And then that will run back into my sump, my slurry sump. Okay, I have everything hooked up now, and um, I'm going to open up the valve here, and then turn on my pump. The pump is on a foot pedal, um, actuated switch, so I can just do that remotely right now. And let's let it rip. You see the water coming in and going out. Take a look down here. Looking pretty nice. Now this slurry coming out of the bottom there, as you can see, is relatively thick. Look at the top there mostly water. You can see the glass coming out with it, the glass beads I'm running now. Working pretty nice though. Now you notice it shakes. I noticed that when I first tested it, I thought why is that thing shaking? And it's just because of you're putting uneven slurry into this uh, cavity and it's spinning so obviously it's going to be like washing machine with an uneven load um, it's going to shake which doesn't matter to me or probably anyone else it's just kind of an interesting trait that a cyclone would have that's running water through it now if you have a cyclone like on my uh, sandblasting cabinet that is dusty air which is if there is any kind of imbalanced condition or unbalanced condition you're really not going to notice it so it's actually really cool how this thing works Yeah, I can't wait to get a permanent setup on my new cabinet when I get it finished. So, it's been a long time in the making. But this is working great though. I'd say I have a slurry concentration probably 95% coming out of the bottom. There's a little bit of water coming out of the bottom, but not much. What's nice about this is you can just keep running this um, until it quits spitting out beads. I think it looks like it's starting to clear up here a little bit. I actually drained the dirty water out of this tank and put clean water in for demonstration purposes so you could see the beads coming out of here. If it was uh, the regular water would just be, you know, would have junk in it so you wouldn't be able to see the difference. But you can see the concentration is uh, getting lower and lower as it goes on. And it's nice because it just re keeps recirculating that water and as it does that it'll just keep spitting out more and more beads till they're all gone. Yeah, I mean you look at it, most, most they're almost all gone now. In fact I don't see any at all. It's still draining out of the bottom of the cyclone, but here in a little bit that will turn into all 
water. And that was a very fast exchange. You see that's getting really thick there now for some reason. But up here, uh, you really can't see any beads coming out. I like it, it's a nice design. I, definitely a good addition on any vapor blasting cabinet. Makes your life easier. Uh, before, like I said, I was filling up two, three buckets full of water and I had to dump them off. And this way, I can just keep cleaning up my cabinet. I don't have to worry about, you know, about you know, running out of water and having to refill it or anything like that. Yeah, it's still getting, there must be beads left over in that funnel because I'm not seeing any beads in the line at all in the entrance or the inlet line whatsoever. What I find interesting is that it didn't do this in the first place when there was more beads in the line there's actually more water coming out the bottom which might have something to do with the speed of the water flow maybe I don't know but, but I think maybe the water flow has sped up so more of it's coming out of the top and there's less going in the bottom now I'm not that's just a guess so while it's doing that I'm gonna clean out my cabinet I'm gonna spray it out and at some point that will turn into just water I'm thinking Okay, now we're just getting all water here. Now there's still beads in the line because I just started cleaning this out here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean out the cabinet a little bit more, get some more beads in the sump and then uh, open the valve back up. So just give me a second here. Let's go ahead and open that back up. And there's more beads coming through. Yeah. More water because the, the bead concentration went up. I don't know why that is, why it does that. Interesting uh, characteristic though. Yeah. Collecting every last bead. I think... Um, a couple other guys that tried it said they had 20 minutes or half hour in total bead removal. This dedicated line though is nice coming in to the inlet and you don't have to worry about disconnecting your blasting gun or anything. Uh, you don't have to put it onto the cyclone. You can see here the little helix going up through. Looks like a zigzag. Yeah, there's a slight vortex there's a line going up through the center you see how anything when it comes through it it spins it makes like a zigzag that is totally awesome so I'm gonna clean this out again here real quick there's still beads coming out of that thing though so I'm curious at this point what this would look like um, if you took some high-speed video of this maybe 300 600 uh, frames per second and just I just I'm curious as to what that vortex looks like inside that tube um, maybe we can catch some suspended particles in there rotating or that zigzag effect